Dr. Rob here, how are you? Pleasure, Wednesday afternoon, sitting in the office. Uh, had a great weekend uh, lecturing to a whole bunch of doctors virtual and patients also keep asking me this one very interesting question. And the question is without, w without any further ado, all pertains to about premature aging. Now premature aging speaks to the idea of a, a lot of people's interests and a lot of people want to know is it fate? Is it my genetics? Or do I have a choice? Can I slow the process down? Can I stop it? How do I do these things? And I can tell you that what we call premature aging, you know, it's that person you saw at a high school reunion and go, did I go to high school with them? And then there's others like the uh, Dick Clark when I grew up, never looked like he aged today. Uh, President Reagan never looked like he aged today. People in the media, sometimes they, they don't look like they age today. Uh, how can that happen? Well, for me, premature aging is an epidemic in America. Leaving the lucky few with near-perfect genetics, the reward of seemingly endless youth, while the rest of us tend to uh, our crow's feet, our aching joints, fatigue, and even memory loss. So, um, you know, is it fate or is it choice? You're seeing more and more males and females in their 50s, which was considered old, I can say, because I'm in my 50s at one point, um, looking phenomenal. I mean, males, uh, males in the... Um, acting business like a Tom Cruise and a Brad Pitt are still leading men, uh, still looking very vibrant, lean. Uh, I think Hugh Jackman is just at about about 50 years old, looks great. The women, uh, when you're looking at a Salma Hyatt, she looks outstanding. So you're seeing the ability to stay vibrant and look considerably younger as we age. So it's more of a choice of uh, the environment we live in, taking care of ourselves and the like. But the questions are very simple. Is it good genes? Is our fate sealed with the writing of our DNA? The way I look at it is our genes are like keys on a piano and you can choose the ones you'd like to strike to play your song of life. Um, the, to me, the environment is the fate changer and we underestimate that so much. So when you look at genetics, which is your nature, it's what you're giving, it's only 10 to 30% of your outcome. The environment is how you nurture your body and your outcome is your epigenetics, sort of like what you click on the menu of genetics on, that you express. So for me, it's all about epigenetics, and many people know that I've talked about epigenetics. It um, will be appearing in my upcoming book, uh, but so it's nature, nurture equals outcome, or genetics, environment equals epigenetics. So most of the cells in your body don't live as long as we do. Um, actually, there's a tremendous turnover. Old cells die, but before they do, they create new ones to take their place. This is technically known as cell turnover. Um, cell turnover in a perfect world, very simply, is at the end of a cell's lifespan, it prepares for death by creating a new cell to take its place. The dying cell's DNA acts as a blueprint for its replacement. The older new cells are now perfect copies. This process is repeated over and over during the course of life. That would be sort of a utopia, if you will. But the cell turnover in the real world is slightly different. During the course, if a cell's of a, a cell's lifespan, free radicals created by your environment and your body. Very common, your body creates them, very simply, because we have something called mitochondria and we make ATP in our mitochondria, the byproduct or the side effect is free radicals. So the more efficient our mitochondria, the less free radicals we have. Our environment produces a lot of free radicals. Now, a free radical is um, very pro-oxidative. So when you think of a free radical, it's sort of like rusting inside your body. The environment provides a lot of these free radicals. So um, these free radicals attack each one of your cells about 100,000 times a day and chip away at your DNA. When these cells prepare for death, they use their slightly damaged DNA as that blueprint to create their replacements. During the replacement cell's lifespan, free radicals damage it, already damaged DNA, until, replica until it replicates and dies. So you have this picture, and it chips away at the picture. Now you make a picture of that sort of chipped picture, and on and on and on. So when you really think about it, it's sort of like making a copy of a copy of a copy. The example I like to use of the uh, effect that free radicals have from your environment 
is sort of like taking a copy machine. We've got one in the front. There's Xerox machines, if you will, but it's a copy machine. And you take this piece of paper and you put the piece of paper down and you make a copy. Now you make a copy, you make a copy, you make a copy, you make a copy. If the copy machine is kept well, it's maintained, you switch the filter, you put the ink in, you do everything, that hundredth copy will look pretty similar to the original copy. But when you don't take care of it, and you don't maintain it, and you don't keep it in the proper environment, just like your body, you will not, and that machine will not make a quality copy. And that's cell replication. So does quenching free radicals mean just taking more vitamin C? No. That would be true if it, the only type of free radical was attacking your health or one kind of free radical. There are many free radicals. That's why they call it reactive oxygen species. There's a superoxide ion. There's a hydroxyl radical. There's a single let ox oxygen. There's hydro hydrogen peroxide. And there's a superoxide ions. Selecting a dietary or nutraceutical intervention requires both a antioxidant variety and a high potency. We usually measure that on what we call the ORAC scale. So what do I recommend right off the bat? Well, I recommend good quality foods, like organic foods, whole foods, because they're going to give you good quality nutrients. They're going to give you multivitamins and multiminerals. Also, everybody, if you want to decrease your aging, without question, you want to be able to take a good quality um, multivitamin, multimineral. So let's talk about our environment in our body, our blood sugar. Now that's something that's overlooked. I'm a big proponent. I will say this, when it comes to labs, I want everybody to make note. You want to ask, you want to ask your doctor, whoever it is, you want to ask them for appropriate blood sugar labs. You want more than just glucose. Glucose is uh, your glucose at a, a time and space. And uh, you want hemoglobin A1C, which is really a great diabetic marker. That hemoglobin A1C will tell you your red blood cell count of sugar from 90 to 120 days. Uh, more so than that, you want HOMA. Uh, you want insulin markers. You, um, so you want post pyramidal. So if anybody's interested, I can share with you a whole litany of blood sugar markers on blood tests. In any case, why do, I always ask this question, why do the internal organs of diabetics tend to age faster than the average person? Well, the true answer is advanced glycated end products. Check out the acronym AGES. So elevated blood sugar binds to a protein in your blood known as albumin. This creates an advanced glycated end product, which increases the breakdown of arteries and organs at an accelerated rate. So advanced glycated end products, they are, so you know, this is an old definition that I learned way back in chiropractic school and still stands today, is more than just markers of aging since they can exert adverse biological effects on tissues and cells, including the activation of intracellular signal transduction pathways. This all leads up to the upregulation of those infamous cytokines, inflammatory cytokines, and free radical production, all leading you down a path of increased inflammation and, of course, increased oxidative stress. So once again, you do not have to even be a diabetic to create advanced glycated end products. Even a temporary imbalance in blood sugar due to improper diet and stress, people were up last night, they were eating, they were watching an election, which we have no answer for, I get it. That improper diet and stress can produce advanced glycated end products and promote premature aging. Now, the idea of advanced glycated end products is truly associated with diabetes and insulin resistance. Now, the idea of being elevated in blood sugar and having some insulin resistance will promote brain neural cell degeneration. So the real question is, should everybody be in a diabetic diet? Well, I don't like to call it a diabetic diet. I'm a large proponent of a anti-inflammatory, low carbohydrate, low glycemic diet. So I'm more plant-based, ketogenic, possibly Mediterranean, because sugar is very deleterious to everybody's overall health. Sugar is extraordinarily deleterious to people's brains. They used to call Alzheimer's diabetes type three. So if you, out there suffer from fatigue after meals, interrupted sleep, or weight gain, you probably have suboptimal blood sugar balance, and that may also be playing a role in your premature aging. So the key, if you will, or the gem, keep your blood sugar balanced throughout the day reduces the risk of excess advanced glycated 
in product production. So there's several lifestyle changes that I've mentioned and several more I'm going to go into detail now that will make it such that you can improve your blood sugar balance. So what about reducing stress? So someone came in and said, oh my God, I was watching last night, I'm stressed, this and that. All right, well, reduce the stress will help with related insulin production. Two minutes, just two. After you experience stress, your body starts producing cortisol, the stress hormone. This triggers insulin production that lowers your blood sugar, which in turn increases your cravings for high glycemic index foods. You need sugar. So when people say they eat when they're stressed, they're not kidding. You want to blunt cortisol? You do so with adaptogenic herbs, magnesium, or good quality breathing techniques. Anything that will allow you to chill out, if you will. So I'm a big proponent. This is a very easy thing. So if it's a doc listening, you can follow this. If it's um, any patient, it's very easy to test also. These are one of the baseline tests that I do in my office. And just one little shout out. Hey, Jen, I'm going to give you a like. Jennifer, how are you? Pleasure to hear from you. Um, hope all is well. And let's get back into the acid alkaline balance. So pH. The idea of pH is um, very simple. If you're seven or more, you're considered alkaline. If you're below seven, you're considered acidic. So now let's break down some more ideas on that. A healthy diet is the cornerstone for me of any effective anti-aging program. It's a cornerstone of any lifestyle change. So in essence, you are what you eat, right? Well, not exactly. You are what you eat, diet, absorb, convert into bioavailable form, then use at a cellular level. To take that one step further, one notch higher, you are what you eat, digest, absorb, that what you ate. So let me make that clear because I don't think that was clear enough. So if you're eating a fish, if you're eating something from the ground, a fruit, if um, you're eating an ancient grain, if you're eating grass-fed beef, it's not just what you absorb, it's what they were fed or what they were fed on. Every one of those steps requires different active enzyme complexes that are extremely pH sensitive. Your absorption, your conversion, your digestion, etc. Getting it into a cellular level. So it's all about active enzymes. So if you have an inactive enzyme, you're not, things are not going to work really well. You have an inactive enzyme, but you have enzyme cofactors like good quality vitamins and minerals. And I always recommend everybody have a multivitamin, multimineral. You're going to have an active enzyme complex. You have enzymes, you're going to have enzymatic reactions, you're going to have what I call complete equations or a completed sentence. So unfortunately, if you're acidic and your pH is below 7, you're going to have much less active enzyme complex. However, on the converse, if you have an alkaline pH and your salivary pH is over 7, you can have much more active enzyme complex. So one of the key concepts for me, and I'd like to tell anybody who's taking a supplement, selling a supplement, thinking about purchasing a supplement, even if the nutrient cofactors are available to catalyze enzymatic reactions, the enzyme activity will be greatly diminished if the body pH is not optimal. So the whole idea is that it's great that I give supplements, but if I don't get people's pH up, if I don't get people in an alkaline um, status, they're not going to be able to absorb all the vitamins. So people will be saying, with all the vitamins they take, why do they still feel lousy? Lack of good quality pH, an easy test. Now, um, for me, pH balance and acid buffering are really critical to human health and can slow the aging process. So what are a couple of the main causes of uh, acidic pH? Well, number one, we mentioned it's stress. Well, what about foods? <laughs> we can talk about a plethora of foods that may be um, acid promoting, like any kind of artificial sweetener, neutral sweet, equal, aspartame, sweet and low. Certain fruits that most people will consider healthy, like blackberries, cranberries, and prunes, fruits that are high in the glycemic index, beans, veggies, legumes, nuts and seeds, you know, your peanuts, your walnuts, or the nuts that are cooked with canola oil. Grains, well, wheat, white flour, pastries, pasta, meats, shellfish, pork, beef, non-organic grass-fed is a problem, eggs and dairy, no bueno, cheese, homogenized milk, ice creams, and beverages like beer, soft drinks, and non-organic coffee and tea. 
So the real question is, and a lot of people ask me, well, how do you know if you're acidic or not? Well, you can have some little pH strips and you can test, you know, your pH strips and see where your pH is. So what about therapeutic strategies? Well, that's a great question, sort of a rhetorical question for me. So let's talk about uh, your pH strips. Number one, uh, that's a great idea to test your pH. But what strategy would you want? Well, for me, I would do my what I call my Dr. Rob Super 5 micronutrients for anti-aging, multivitamin, multimineral, omega-3 fatty acids, vitamin D, probiotics, and of course, any kind of healthy green and vegetable organic drink. So you get all your fruits and vegetables. More so than that, a good organic healthy diet is also a great choice. So, as you guys know, I do a couple of videos every week. I didn't see a lot of questions. I know everybody's back at work, maybe trying to recover from last night. I really appreciate all your time. Do me a favor. If you have any questions, please write them in the comment section. Um, if you like what you see, do me a favor, like it, share it. So please spread the word. Everybody's interested on in how not to age. Uh, it's been my pleasure. A lot more coming this week. Just remember, I'm Dr. Rob Silverman, always yours in health.